And we are going to start, we're going to get the ball rolling with you. And we're going to ask you, how has Lasso Frere been behaving? What's happening at Lasso Frere right now? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not been um, doing anything different to what has happened um, over the past month. And basically, it's continuing to extrude a, a lava dome. We had a look at that dome on, on Monday. And what we noticed was that the, the northern part of the dome was, um, was um, well, had a lower gradient than the, the southern part of it. So it seems to be a bit elongated in the northern part. So one of the things which people would have noticed happening here is that we sampled that dome, we sampled rocks from the dome. And those dome rocks would actually complement the degassing studies that we're doing here. The information that we get from them would, would complement that. So that is the, the kind of thing I do as a, as a scientist. Look at the gas chemistry, the gas fluxes, the magma chemistry, the mineral chemistry, and the textures of the rocks. And basically, what I should be able to do, if all goes well, is tell you things like how deep your magma chamber is, how hot it is, how much water there is, there is in it. I could tell you things about how deep your degassing is occurring. You know, um, if there's mixing happening in your reservoir, you know, magma chamber processes is what I really specialize in. Yeah, they're, they're very different systems. And it's, it's probably closer to to the, this volcano that you have is probably closer to the one I work, worked on for my PhD, which is Mount Etna in, in, in Sicily, in Italy. Um, but because of, because we are, well, the scientific staff at the MBO are SRC staff, we would have done work, or me personally would have done work on this volcano in the past. And the last time I came here was 2018, where I took some gas measurements from in that crater. So I have sort of a baseline to compare the measurements I'm taking now to. I would have done work in Dominica and St. Lucia as well, because those islands would have fumarolic fields where I can apply the multigas technique and try and develop baselines for these sleeping volcanoes. But the idea is if I can get the chemistry of them when they're not doing something, I should be able to see if they're coming alive for want of a better phrase, from changes in the chemistry or the chemical composition of the plumes, which, which I've, I've been trying to do. So I've, I've been working on this volcano in the past, but it's, it's not the same as Montserrat's volcano. It's, it's slightly different. Um, the, the magmas in Montserrat are a bit stickier. They're more viscous. And the domes tend to grow a lot, a lot bigger instead of more pancake like domes that you get here. But that, that has to do with how sticky the lavas are. And then in terms of the degassing regime, the, the gases are coming up slightly different to Montserrat. Here you've got one lava being erupted. In Montserrat, we've got two. So there's, there's subtle differences, but differences that we can, we can wrap our heads around and adjust for this system and monitor it properly. And what they do is they crush, they crush the entire rock and make it into a powder and look at the, um, the major elements and the trace elements. But they also slice that rock into some really thin slices and look at it under a microscope and look at the mineral composition. So one of the things we want to do is to compare it to the most recent eruption, which is 1979, to see how similar it is to that or if it's even the same material that's coming out because that tells us a lot about what to expect, if it's fresh material or if it's old material that's just oozing out. There's a big difference in terms of what is to come. Fresh and magma to have more, a more explosive um, component to it than old material which has sat there in the gas for 40 years, because we know gases drive eruptions. So if it's fresh and full of gas, then the potential for explosive activity is greater than if it, if it wasn't fresh material.
But that does not mean you can't have that sort of activity in both scenarios, but it just reduces the, the potential if it's all the material, but it doesn't rule it out. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think the gas sampling is, is a lot more useful because it's more real time. You know, as I mentioned, we had to send the rocks overseas and get them into a lab, get them analyzed, and they're still waiting on the data. We sampled those rocks on the 16th of January. So that's, that's a bit more than um, two weeks now. And we still don't have any sort of concrete information as to what's in them yet. That will come. However, the gassing studies, they're normally real time in most cases, whether we're using remote sensing or direct sampling. And that is, is, is much more useful for, for um, predicting eruptions. Now, you know, as, as the question was asked before, how different this volcano is to, to the one in Montserrat, you need to know what you, how your system behaves and how to use your, your gas data. So for instance, in Montserrat, the, the sulfur dioxide flux that we are seeing is not really indicative of the, the magma extrusion rate. And that's simply because the magma that's coming out or the lava that's coming out at the surface that is not where the gas is coming from. It's coming from a deeper one, which we don't see much of. So what we use in Montserrat to, to have a, a, an idea of your, your extrusion rate is your sulfur dioxide and HCl ratio. Because as I probably mentioned in one of these um, briefings or updates a few days ago, HCl comes out really shallow. So if you look at that ratio, you can tell how fast your magma is coming out past your two kilometer depth, how fast it's coming out shallow. So this volcano, I think the sulfur dioxide flux, because, because the basalt, the basaltic, um, the and basaltic andesite which you have here is properly mixed. So you don't have two different compositions, you have one. And I'm fairly certain that the sulfur dioxide flux, if we can get it measured, would be indicative of how much lava that's coming out at the top of this volcano. So I think for this, eruption and for this volcano, this sulfur dioxide flux would be a very useful tool in predicting what your volcano is doing. Because if you really think about it, when your magma is coming out slow, that's a good thing. If it starts coming out fast, then you, you're exposing more gas to the surface much more rapidly. And then your, your potential for an explosion increases. So I think certain systems and certain gas measurements can be quite useful, but you, you need to make sure that you understand what your system is doing and which of your gas measurements to use to answer the questions that you're trying to, to answer. We, we try and gather as much data as possible. Currently, the volcano is not posing a threat to the communities which are close or close-ish to the volcano. And that's a function of the fact that the, the crater is actually containing the, the hazard from the dome right now. If for some reason that dome would start becoming a threat, I hope that we would be in a position to say we would affect and um, when. Also the same for explosions, although explosions are a bit more tricky because you could have explosions which are triggered from shallow interaction of water. And if they're not driven from depth, they're harder to see. So it's, it's not, well, I would say it's not an exact science, but, but we're trying to build up uh, uh, as much baselines as we can for what's happening now. And hopefully if there's a change, if there's an increase in anything which we consider significant, we should be able to, to give the authorities um, enough warning so they can take the necessary action. I mean, when we say sleep, and it, it means that it's not trying to kill people. Um, simply put, if it's not erupting, then um, based on our terminology, it's sleeping. Because we know these systems are uh, uh, long-lived, 
Um, the earliest rocks from Sufria, La Sufria here, they're probably around a million years old. That is a very long time. So that volcano has been around for around a million years. And it probably will be around for another few million years, which I don't think any of us alive now can say that. So there are times when it's, for whatever reason, not doing much, not being violent, not erupting. I mean, those periods are when we say, okay, yeah, it's, it's sleeping, but it's not dead. And I mean, one of the, the, the true the telltale signs of a sleeping volcano, which is not dead, is when you've got these fumarole fields, as you had in the old dome at, at Suf Sufri, when you've got the gas enough sulfur at the surface, there's a magma chamber down there somewhere that's probably going to go off at some point in time in the future. It may not be in your lifetime because these systems operate on time scales which are much greater than, than human 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 life, life, lifetimes. So you may not ever see that system erupt. But that does not mean it's dead. It's just not ready to go off when you are wrong. So so it's a technicality if you like. They're not they're sleeping, but they're they're not and they're still restless because they they still generate earthquakes. And um, for instance, an island like Dominica or even Montserrat, for example, we, we were having earthquakes of roughly every 30 years leading up to this eruption, and that went back for about a hundred years. So the people who witnessed those first eruption, um, earthquakes rather, or felt them, were not around when this volcano erupted, because that was a hundred years ago. So these systems are long lived and they do things and then they pause for a while and then they'll do things again. But they're still very much alive, but just resting. Um, if you want to think that they're gathering energy or strength for the next eruption, that is one possibility. No, they're not. They can't be ignited. Um, what they are, very, they're very caustic gases. And I'm sure people would have noticed the, the damage done to the vegetation on the western flanks of this volcano that's um, in the, the Larakai area, or just not, just south of the, the Larakai Valley area. Um, they're quite uh, caustic and they, they form mild acids when they combine with moisture in the air, water. And even when we were there on, on Monday, um, I was definitely, well, I wouldn't say smell, but I was, I was, sent, I was sensing the presence of HCL because if you spend enough time sniffing volcanic gases, they do different things to you. The different gases do different things to you. And there was, the HCL was burning in the back of my throat. So I knew it was HCL because that's the only one that does that. So I knew that was coming out. So that I think is what's actually doing the damage to the vegetation um, down slope of the volcano because we were always getting sulfur gases before. When I came here in 2018, I measured sulfur dioxide and minor amounts of sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, and water from the old fumarole in the crater. So I know those gases, those gases were there and people who would have gone, gone up to the top of that volcano would not have seen that sort of devastation to the vegetation until now. And that's because you've added a new gas to the cocktail, which is the halogen, so HCL and HF. And those are what are actually doing the damage down slope. But they're not, they can't be ignited. And that's probably a good thing because magmatic temperatures, I mean, the temperature of this lava here is a bit hotter than Montserrat. So I'm fairly certain that when we, we get the petrological data back from the rocks, we'll probably be getting temperatures of around 1,000 degrees Celsius for these, for these lavas, which is quite hot. So it's probably a good thing that the gases are not um, combustible because they would have ignited, as, as the, um, the question suggested. I think the question about prediction, you know, that's, that's a tricky one because you basically have to understand how your system behaves and which parameters are useful for you to predict what your volcano is doing. And then you, you need to be able to see um, the signal for what it is. Because I can tell you, I, I have, I know this from experience that at least twice, we've seen things in hindsight. It's after it happened, 
and we went back and looked at the record and they said okay yeah that's the signal there so seeing it is one thing but seeing it for what it is is another thing and seeing it for what it is means you you have to have a good idea for your system behaves and what that signal is telling you and that is what we're trying to do we're trying to wrap our heads around the system properly so if it's if it's giving us an indication that it wants to explode we will see for what it is and we could tell um, the authorities which would be nemo in in due time